Headaches are a very common symptom that are divided into primary and secondary headaches, where in primary headaches, the headaches themselves are the disorder, while secondary headaches are the result of an underlying condition. Around 98% of headaches are primary headaches, and the most common types are tension type headaches, affecting around 60 to 80% of the population, migraines, which affect around 15%, and cluster headaches, which affect around 0.1% of the population. Secondary headaches can come from conditions such as space-occupying lesions, most commonly intracranial tumours. They may also come from infections such as meningitis or encephalitis, as well as subarachnoid haemorrhage, cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, giant cell arthritis, and intracranial hypertension. Medication overuse headache is another type of secondary headache that often coexists with primary headaches. As we said, tension type headaches are the most common headaches. These are often described as feeling like a band of pressure around the head and can be felt diffusely across the head, although in most instances is felt bilaterally. The pain is an aching, dull pain and there may be some associated tenderness of the scalp, neck and shoulders. Risk factors can include anxiety and stress states, poor sleep, and tension type headaches are more common in teenagers and young adults. They can also be divided into episodic and chronic headaches, with episodic happening less than 15 times a month, while chronic being 15 or more times a month, which is an important distinction as this may change the treatment. Episodic tension headaches are often treated with hydration, exercise, and over-the-counter pain relief, like paracetamol or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, while chronic tension headaches may require prescribed medication, including antidepressants like amitriptyline, which is a tricyclic antidepressant, or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, like fluoxetine. Benzodiazepines can also be used. Overall, the tricyclic antidepressants have been found to be the most effective. Next, we have migraines, which is the second most common type of headache. These are described as being moderate to severe in intensity, with a recurrent throbbing or pulsating nature. In contrast to tension headaches, migraines may often be unilateral, and may also have additional symptoms such as nausea and vomiting, photophobia, and phonophobia. Around 1 in 3 sufferers also have an aura, which is a progressive focal neurological symptom. For example, the most common is a visual aura that may be the presence of zigzag lines across the visual field, called a scotoma. Others include physical sensation auras, such as numbness or tingling, as well as even muscle weakness. As with other headache types, migraines may be classed as episodic or chronic but it is important to consider that chronic sufferers of migraines are more likely to have more social difficulties, which will further add to their stress. The acute treatment involves over-the-counter medication such as paracetamol or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, followed by triptans if there is no improvement. Prevention is also important, and beta blockers such as propanolol or tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline may be used as first line, followed by anticonvulsants like valproit or gabapentin if a second line is needed. Cluster headaches are next, and these come under the category of trigeminal autonomic cephalgia. These headaches are named suicidal headaches and are known for the excruciating pain associated with them. They are unilateral headaches, often around the eye or temple region, that are characterised by a short duration of below 4 hours. Associated findings include sweating, tearing, hyperemia, ptosis and rhinorrhea, as well as severe restlessness. The attacks tend to happen at roughly the same time during the day, which is why they are sometimes called alarm clock headaches and are often precipitated by drinking alcohol. These headaches are often seen more commonly in young men and in smokers. Episodic cluster headaches are classed as lasting between 7 and 365 days with at least one month of complete remission. But if there is no pain-free month and the pain is ongoing beyond a year, it is classed as chronic. 
the treatment comes down to relief of acute episodes as well as the prevention of future episodes. Acutely, oxygen therapy is useful as a triptans. While prevention may include the calcium channel block of rapamil, lithium or topiramate, and in some cases deep brain or occipital nerve stimulation may be effective. Secondary headaches are headaches due to an underlying cause, and as we said make up around 2% of all headaches. We already mentioned the conditions that can cause secondary headaches, but what are the red flags that may help us distinguish them from primary headaches? One is the presence of a thunderclap headache, a sudden hyperacute onset of exploding pain which is often described as the worst headache of my life by patients. With this history, the possibility of a subarachnoid hemorrhage must be explored. Other causes of a thunderclap headache include pituitary apoplexy, intracranial hypotension and arterial dissection. A new onset headache in patients under 10 or over 50 years of age should also be investigated and especially in older patients looking for giant cell arthritis which can cause blindness if left untreated. Others include persistent morning headaches with nausea which may indicate intracranial hypertension, new onset of headaches in patients with history of cancer which may indicate a metastasis or even thrombosis. Patients who are immunocompromised with a new headache should also be investigated to rule out a potentially infective cause. A headache progressing over several weeks or a headache associated with postural change which may indicate a CSF leak should also be further looked at. Aura symptoms may be a red flag if they last longer than one hour, include motor weakness, are occurring while the patient is taking the oral contraceptive pill, or if the aura is different from previously experienced auras. We also mentioned medication overuse headaches, which are a form of secondary headache and is defined by the following criteria. There must be headaches on 15 or more days per month and a pre-existing headache disorder. There must also be overuse of acute headache drugs for over three months, which is defined as 10 days a month for triptans or ergotamines, or 15 days a month for paracetamol or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. There must also be no better explanation in the international classification of headache disorders. Overall, the treatment is varied. Some patients will be able to stop their medications immediately, while some may stop gradually, while others may need admission as they withdraw medication. But overall, there is no fixed withdrawal regime.